Neophyte one, thank you for the super chat. Forgive me, doctor. You may disregard this question if too off topic. But if I may ask, do you think it likely all gospel authors knew Josephus' works? Yeah, thank you for the question. It's uh, it's no more off topic than the Luke Acts Josephus question. So if uh, if Jacob's okay with me taking these, then I don't mind uh, answering it. Um, again, it's not it's not about conclusions. Um, some people get very exercised about these issues. I, I've had people write to me, you know, not scholars, but just people out of the blue saying, "Why don't you think Josephus knew uh, that that sorry that Mark knew Josephus, or you say Luke Acts knew Josephus, but you you don't think Mark did? Why? Why? Like that's inconsistent." Um, and I don't know why people get worked up about these things or what, I mean, let's put it another way, why people are invested in these ideas. I, I really don't. For a historian, you can't, you can't be invested in conclusions, as I tried to say before, because conclusions come and go. We change our minds just like scientists do with um, new evidence, with new ways of understanding the evidence. You, you can't do history. You cannot, this is a really important point, because so many people are propagating ideas or propositions or theses or hypotheses. You cannot do history if you are wedded to a conclusion. You cannot do history if you already know the conclusion and you're invested in it. It's impossible because obviously you can't investigate uh, in an open-minded way if you already have a hypothesis that you're committed to, right? And that that's why uh, believers of any kind, um, that means, you know, uh, Christian believers, if they believe that certain historical things happened in a certain way, cannot really do history, but it holds the same for people who are, who are on the other end, who are atheists, agnostics, and really committed to certain historical propositions, it's fine if they're committed to them. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with Christian believers believing that certain things happen. But I'm a historian, and that's the problem. You cannot do history. It, in the same way, you cannot do good science if you're already committed to, you know, say this, this, this drug will have this. I, I'm sure this drug will have this reaction. I don't care what the evidence is. Um, you, you can't do an honest investigation if you already believe certain things. In the same way, um, uh, so it's just a question of explaining evidence to, to come back to this, this question here. It's just a matter of, you know, what is the problem and how do you solve the problem? In the case of Luke and Acts, Luke Acts, we call it, there's a clear problem that has been recognized ever since the beginning of critical scholarship. And it is that crucial events in Josephus, the census under Quirinius, the rebellion of Judas the Galilean, um, the, the, the rise of the Sicarii, whom otherwise only Josephus talks about, this Latin named group of knife carrying assassins, uh, the Egyptian pseudo prophet, uh, the calling the Pharisees and Sadducees high reses, coming back to an earlier question, using the word hyresis and claiming that the Pharisees were the most precise of the schools. Um, so so acrib, acribestate, acribea is the, the root. All of this Greek language and, and even um, the Lysanias as the Tetrarch of Abilene uh, in Luke chapter three, uh, who goes nowhere in the text, but Luke mentions this Lysanias Tetrarching over Abilene. These things all, all appear in Josephus and in Luke Acts. So the problem has always been, it's a well-known problem. It's been debated since the 19th century. Uh, how did they come to have the same stuff in like this? Uh, these, uh, in, in my solution to the problem is I argue not from that the, the, the data are similar, but that the actual formulations, the linguistic formulations, are Josephan. So I think I think it likely that Luke Acts used Josephus because Josephus' distinctive language 
is has left its traces in Luke Acts. Okay, that's not the case for Matthew, John, or Mark. It's simply not the case, um, and there's no there's no problem there that would be solved by arguing that Mark knew Josephus. That doesn't mean I can prove that Mark didn't know Josephus. It doesn't mean I can prove that Matthew or John didn't know Josephus. I simply have no reason to think they did. I don't know any problem that would be solved by that hypothesis.